In this video, I'll talk about the five endgame bosses and how to access them. So during one of Blizzard's campfire chats, they showed this chart giving a basic idea of where you need to go to gain the materials to fight each boss. So this video is going to show what items we need, where to get them, where the bosses are, and some level recommendations so that you don't waste your materials like I did on a certain level 100 boss. We'll start off with the two solo bosses that aren't connected to the other three, with the first one being the Beast in the Ice. This boss is fought in the Glacial Fissure Nightmare Dungeon that can only be crafted by having 30,000 gold, 250 sigil powder, and 9 distilled fear. Distilled fear is a summoning consumable that is earned from completing Nightmare Dungeons that are tier 30 or higher. This means that you have to be in tier 4 torment to gain access to dungeons that are tier 20 or higher, and that since the dungeons will have to be at least tier 30, the enemies in the dungeons themselves will be at least level 84. If you watch my older Nightmare Dungeon video or just need a refresher, in tier 4, enemy levels in Nightmare Dungeons is the tier level plus 54. One thing to note is that Distilled Fear aren't guaranteed drops for completing a tier 30 plus Nightmare Dungeon, so chances are you'll have to complete more than just 9 to gain access to this boss. But once you create the Nightmare Sigil and activate it, you can go in and clear the dungeon which is just southwest of Kievashad. I'm not going to talk about the actual boss fights, I'm just the messenger showing you how to get there and want you to experience these for yourself. The other solo boss is Lord Zir, the Dark Master. Chances are you completed the seasonal quest line, so this is just another opportunity to fight him if you really enjoyed the fight, or he has a specific unique that you're grinding for. Lord Zir needs Exquisite Blood, which is obtained through Tier 4 Legion events and World Bosses. In my experience so far, Legion events have been giving me one Exquisite Blood, whereas World Bosses have been giving me three of them. These are timed events, so you'll want to pull up a website such as helltides.com, since Legion events are every 25 minutes and world bosses are every three and a half hours. Once you have the nine exquisite blood, we'll want to make our way to the Darkened Way, which is in Fractured Peaks, southeast of Kievashad and northwest of Yelezna. This is the same area from the campaign where we fought Nayrel's mother, if that looks or sounds familiar. These last three bosses are connected, with Varshan and Grigoire dropping items that are needed to fight Duriel. Before getting into each one specifically, you can fight Varshan and Grigoire in Tier 3 for a lesser cost, however, they don't drop the required materials for fighting Duriel. So, I don't recommend fighting them in Tier 3 since specifically Grigoire's items are just a pain to get. But starting with him, we need a Living Steel, which is acquired from opening Living Steel chests for 300 cinders during Helltide events. This is where having Helltides.com open will help find these chests. Regardless if you're in Tier 3 or Tier 4 difficulty, the chest still costs 300 cinders. The difference being that in Tier 3, you gain only one Living Steel, whereas in Tier 4, you gain three. Since Grigoire costs 5 Living Steel to summon, that means we'll have to open at least 2 of these 300 Cinder Cost chests. So, as a reminder, Cinders disappear at the end of a Helltide, so just make sure that you have enough time to get to the 300 and find the chest. Once we have 5 Living Steels, we'll need to go to the Hall of the Penitent to summon him. This is located in the Dry Steps, south of Kedbardu and west of the Onyx Watchtower. Killing him gives us the Shard of Agony, which is needed to summon Duriel. Varshan is our next boss and is the one with the most diverse materials needed to summon. His spot is right next to the Tree of Whispers and Hauser, and like Grigoire, you can fight him in Tier 3 for less materials, but he doesn't drop the item needed to fight Duriel. We need four items to fight Varshan, one Gurgling Head, one Blackened Femur, one Trembling Hand, and one Malignant Heart. Getting items for Varshan is the most flexible since the primary way of getting them is by completing Grim Favors, but they are also accessible from Legion events, random drops from enemies, and are craftable from the Alchemist in any town that has one. So if you already have plenty of Gurgling Heads and need a Blackened Femur, you can gamble some crafting materials for the chance to obtain the Femur. There's also a more direct way of getting the item you want, but that requires sacrificing a Malignant Heart, which is an item obtainable only in Tier 4. Really though, just running around in the blood harvest and killing things will be enough to get you what you need. And then his boss fight is the same as Season 1 if you're familiar with that. He drops a Mucus Slick Egg, which is the second item needed for Duriel. 
Lastly, we finally get to Duriel, who is level 100 and located in the bottom left area of Kejitstan in the gaping crevice. He requires two mucus slick eggs and two shards of agony, which are gained from killing Varshan and Grigoire twice in tier 4 respectively. This is where my Helltide pain comes in, since there are only a couple of living steel chests during a Helltide, whereas Helltides themselves only last 60 minutes and then are on a 75 minute cooldown. So you'll have to open at least four living steel chests. Blood Harvest, on the other hand, I've been spending a lot of time in. They've been a blast so far, so I had plenty of materials to kill Varshan over and over again. After killing Duriel, he will drop 925 item power equipment, which is the highest base level in the game, as well as the increased chance for uber uniques. One thing to be careful about with Duriel is don't underestimate that he's level 100. When I was trying to research what level people were defeating him at, plenty of people were saying, oh, I beat him at level 75, level 80, he's just so easy. So I went in at level 82 and I just got destroyed. I just didn't have enough damage. My build wasn't completely online yet. I got too greedy and impatient and I just lost those materials that I spent. I tried again at level 87 with some better gear and more paragon points and ended up killing him in three minutes. So just something to be aware of. Don't get greedy and waste your materials like I did. But as of right now, those are the five endgame bosses for Diablo 4 in season two. Let me know what you think in the comments. Who's your favorite boss? How do you like the grind to get the materials? Like I said, personally, I hate doing the hell tides, especially after Blood Harvest. Hell tides are just so slow and painful right now that uh, they definitely need some kind of upgrade. They need a, a facelift, but that's all I got for now, and I will talk to you soon.